operators do not necessarily commute, unlike scalar numbers. In other words, the product of operators respect ordering. A special class of operators, known as the canonical conjugate operators, such as the position and momentum operator, which are related by definition such as the Fourier transform, follows the canonical commutation relation. We shall derive them in this video. We begin by recalling the fundamental relations for momentum and position operators we derived in previous video. Here, the momentum operator in the position representation becomes a differential operator in position and vice versa. We shall use these relations in our derivation of the Heisenberg commutation relation. Let's take commutator of x and p and act it on the wave function psi in the position representation. First, we write down the definition of the commutator as in step 1. In step 2, we express the momentum operator in the position representation. Step 3 is just simple differentiation. Using the product rule. Finally, we end up with ih bar multiplied by the wave function. Next, we repeat the exercise, but this time acting on the wave function phi in the momentum representation instead. Step 1 is again the definition of commutator. Step 2 expresses the position operator in the momentum representation. Finally, we also arrive at ih bar multiplied by the wave function. Hence, this shows that the commutator of x with p equals ih bar irregardless of the wave function it acts on. So, we have shown the commutator relation in the one-dimensional case. How about the case of three-dimensional? In this case, let's use the J and K indices to denote the three different degrees of freedom, X, Y, and Z. Since X, Y, and Z are independent directions, the commutators for the case when J not equals to K will simply be zero, as they have to commute. Otherwise, if J equals to K, then the result will be the same as the 1D case. This fact is accounted for by the Kronecker delta function. It is also rather straightforward to extend the commutator identity to the case where the operator x is now a function of x as shown. Here, it is acting on the wave function psi in the position representation. The first step is simply the definition of the commutator. In step 2, we express the momentum operator in the position representation. Step 3 is just simple differentiation using the product rule. Finally, we end up with ih bar multiplied by the differentiation of f with respect to x, and multiplied by the wave function. The final result is written again in the red box. We will leave it as an exercise for you to validate this relation for the case when we have a wave function in the momentum representation instead. In summary, we have the following commutator relations involving functions of x and p. These results can also be extended to the 3D case as shown. More generally, the same relations hold even for general functions of x and p. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.